Hello everyone and welcome back guys to AOR Season 14 for Round 13 here at the Italian Grand Prix. And you join us here for a very, very wet Italian Grand Prix. Not exactly the perfect race conditions for myself. But in all honesty, coming into this race, I wasn't actually even intending to be racing. As you can probably tell by my voice, I'm very, very tired at the moment. And I sort of, you know, obviously after Daytona 24 last night, if you did miss out on that stream, I would highly, highly recommend. But actually, to be honest, I'll, I'll cut 12 hours short into the space of five seconds. Unfortunately, I disconnected, so we, we, retired. we decided to retire the car. Uh, 12 hours into the race, which meant that obviously I didn't still get particularly too much sleep on the whole. So I was coming into this race, I was sort of there, like, I may as well just come in and try and score a few points for Williams, as we are quite tight in the Constructors' standings right now. So yeah, that was basically why I opted to do this race. But here we are then, on the grid, ready for the Italian Grand Prix. Four lights and five lights, and it is finally lights out. Away we go, Charlie White, and we're in absolute age there, and thanks to that, I'm just a little bit unsettled. They shield shift all the way over to fourth gear there. Have a huge snap of overseer. That's going to let a couple of cars through already there. Actually, one car, I think that was x Rob Bobbitts, that nearly binned it into the wall as well. Down in towards turn one, though. Everyone overall taking it quite nice and cautious there. Nice to see, you know, that a lot of people are learning there. As soon as I say that, Die Hard completely uh, whacks Sam Sauber, the championship leader. So we're going to be able to fly past him. Now trying to look right around the outside of Die Hard there. Uh, through the... Uh, you almost forget the name of this corner. I can't even remember it off the top of my head right now. I know it... I'm, Oh, oh, that's going to annoy me all that race long now. Die Hard completely drops it, you know, around the outside of the corner that I just lose the back end through the chicane, but we are going to be able to get past him. And now up into P7 there. So overall, we have made up a couple of positions off the start. I think we started, what, P9, I feel? So not the best qualifying in the world, but honestly, this, these, you know, everyone in this session was like within a second of each other. It's just that ridiculously tight in F2 at the moment here, but it's coming on down this back straight. Unfortunately, it appears there's yellow flags in the background there. I think that was icebergs, unfortunately, having a little bit of an issue. But now, as you can see, we're still, you know, very, very close to everyone else just ahead of me, apart from my teammate, Coldhead, there, who was absolutely romping away with it in these early stages of the race there. So really, really good to see, you know, for the Williams team, you know, we are still within a shot of the constructors. I think we're about eight points off Sauber, which is Sam by himself, which is a little bit worried, you know, that he's winning both championships, but it really just goes to show, you know, how strong and consistent he's been all season long there. But out of the Ascari, you can see VRT Herschel, actually, sorry, not Ascari, at Parabolica even. You can see Herschel is uh, made a little bit of a mistake there and has dropping down the order ever so slightly. You know, we're not going to try and go for a move just yet. You know, this is way too back to be going for a move. I highly doubt anyone would do anything like that as Gorsh Grab just, well, completely punts P1 R Brown off the circuit there. We tried to go, you know, almost four wide on the exit of the corner. They're able to fly past Herschel. No, we're not. We lose the back end once more. And, you know, obviously Herschel with that much better run. Lagging just a bit as well at the moment. It's going to be very, very easy to defend from that move here as we come down into the second chicane there. Herschel going to try and look up the inside of Gorsh Crab there. Nearly a bit of contact between the pair of them there. Herschel gets a poor run on the exit of the corner there. We're going to try and look up the inside there, but unfortunately not going to be able to get that run there. Going to back out of that fairly early, you know, not really going to try and hassle him too much for that. He runs massively wide through the first Lesmo though, and now down into the second cliff in the grass. On the outside there, he's lost the back end into the gravel he goes, and that's going to move us back up in, well, up into P6 of this Grand Prix here. So overall, this you know, so far this race is actually looking quite good for myself. You know, we've made up a couple of positions off at these first couple of laps here, but still a long way to go. As you can see, making a small mistake through Ascari there, not what we needed to do. And I think now Sam F1 LFC is going to be able to pounce on that opportunity there as we lose the back end on the way in. He's going to fly to the outside there. We tried to, you know, just keep it towards the inside there, but Franklish, 110% committed there. He's going to send one down the inside that we just about noticed. He was going for that there, but we're going to try and get a bit of a cheeky switch back on in there. We've got extra bobs behind, almost pushing me through. Three wide we go out of the final corner there. I think Sam's going to be able to back out that nice and early on. Doesn't really want to be getting involved in that too much at this moment in time. Franklish just running that little bit lower wings than myself. Sam's going to try and go back at me as well. Down in towards turn one, though. Break that tiny bit later than Franklish there. Just about get it clipped on the curb. Make sure we give him the room through the corner as well. As you can see, there's arrows absolutely everywhere there. Franklish tries to squeeze me out over the curbs there, but we're just about going to get a better run on the inside through turn three here. And, you know, obviously with that shorter run, we should be able to gain a little bit of distance over Franklish here, but down in towards the second chicane. Is he going to be able to hold it up the inside? Yes, he does. We break it near enough the same point once again there. He doesn't give me any room. I'm going to have to back out of that one there, make a bit of contact with x Bobbitts as he's able to go right around the outside there, but I'm going to try and keep it 
on the inside in towards the first Lesmo there. Franglish runs wide. Bobberts runs wide. We're just going to be able to hold on to P7 for the moment here. Potentially going to be able to line up Franglish for a move as he's all... Uh, you can see he's absolutely sliding that car almost JDM style through the second that Lesmo there. And now down this back straight in towards Ascari. We think about going for a move up the inside of it. Think better of it, you know. Not going to try and risk it all so early on in the Grand Prix and just get the car so down just behind him here. So three laps gone of complete carnage so far in this race. Icebergs dropped it, unfortunately, from the session. That put me off just a tiny bit there. And now Bobbitt's, well, it's a completely open door for him. So he now moves up into P7 of the Grand Prix here. Not really ideal for myself. Try and make sure we get a nice, a good run out of a corner here. But I don't think we're going to be able to do that. Uh, just of yet. Yeah, Bobbitt's doesn't get a particularly good run though, so we could potentially think about going for a move down the inside in towards Tom You know, we're in the slipstream. We are closing up slowly but surely here. We might try and pull to his inside there. Yes, we do, in case he breaks that a little bit earlier. We tried to outbreak him there. Completely lock up both front wheels there. He's obviously going to be able to go for the switchback move. We're just going to have to, you know, keep it on the inside of the circuit. You know, the mistake was made. We're now going to have to lose out on all the potential positions there. Struggling to get the power back down there. Three wide once again as Midget tries to go for a very, very tight gap there. And unfortunately, that mistake has sent me right back down to P11 in this Grand Prix there. But, you know, we're still all over the back of these guys. You can see the top guys are only a couple of corners up the road there. And Herschel just completely missed that first, uh, sorry, the second chicane there. So, gained quite a bit of time from that. Gained, you know, a little bit of help in hand there. But now, half a lap later, Midget going to run slightly wide out of Ascari there, and we're going to pounce back on that opportunity there. So now back up into the points in this Grand Prix, back up into P10 here as Herschel and Sam F1 LFC are now fighting just ahead of me here. So potentially in another two positions we could gain. But unfortunately, by lap 11 of this Grand Prix, we found myself up into P9 of the race there. This is where the pit stops have really started to come in. So we're going to dive it in on the end of this lap here. We thought, well, you know, the aim was to actually try and go for a bit of an undercut on most of the field there. But unfortunately, it seemed that quite a few drivers were opting to pit. And as soon as I got into my, you know, pit box, the, t the game decided to tell me, you know, that it was going to get dry very, very soon there, which is certainly not ideal for myself. The Ferrari as well, actually, somehow managed to ghost with me. But we do jump Tierra Ellis in the pit lane there, thanks to his tiny bit of damage on his front wing there as well. But now out of the pit lane, completely lighting up those rear tyres there, nearly take the car over the white line but somehow just by keeping it with the inside there and we're up into p8 of this grand prix here so we have made up one position in the pits which is quite ideal to see potentially a couple more could be made up over these next few laps and by lap 19 you can see we've actually made up two more positions here up into p6 of the grand prix here as we jumped gorge crab there and now we were closing up towards sam f1 lfc once more here it seems so far this grand prix we've been able to get close and then a tiny mistake would really really set me back here and now all over the back of him, down in towards Ascari. It's happened once more there. Sam just breaks so, so early down into the chicane there. We have to take evasive action there. Completely, you know, use all that extra AstroTurf on the, well, technically the outside, technically the inside. I don't even really know, in all honesty there. But Franglish, that's obviously, once again, going to completely open up the opportunity for him, for him. And it's just these small mistakes that really, really cost me in these races. Really nice. need to try and get my consistency up just a bit more at this moment in time but Franglish still just in front of me here up into P6 and now we're in the slipstream once more here we could potentially try to think about going for a move down the inside in towards T1 there he you know moves very very aggressively to try and break the toe there but we think about going for a move there we think better of it but Gorsh Crab comes from absolutely nowhere there just completely punts me into T1 there obviously I'm on full crank lock there nowhere we can go for T2 as you know I don't really want to have to bail out of the corner there but no idea what that was all about there but that meant unfortunately that I lost quite a bit of time to Franglish just ahead of me here and now as we skip on to lap 24 of the Grand Prix you can see Gorsh Crab 8 tenths back as we come down in towards T1 he's fighting Ellis behind me there we break nice and sensibly into the corner and well once once again it, it's it's happened again there as we tried to give him the room uh, Ellis I think that is going for the switchback move and unfortunately we just cannot get the power down get completely pinched between the pair of them there and, well, that's sent me right around in this Grand Prix. And that was so, so frustrating, you know, the fact that Gorsh did made that mistake twice, you know, on me alone. He'd done it to a couple of other drivers as well in the race. And just so, so frustrating, you know. There's nothing really we could do about that. Especially on the traction, you know, with this game's weak FFB as well, if force feedback, it really means you don't even know when the back end's breaking away half the time there, which is really, really unfortunate. You know, just got ping-ponged. 
between the pair of them there. Luckily, you know, for Ellis, no, nothing done to him there. But unfortunately, Gorsh did get caught out a little bit in that. But I think, you know, that's that's almost karma. I think is the right way to describe it there. Completely missed the first chicane one lap later there. That means Midget is going to move up into P9 of the Grand Prix. I get a three-second time penalty there, even though I quite clearly lost out on a huge amount more time than I gained. But P1R Brown wins the Grand Prix, supposedly. I think Coldhead might have actually won it due to pens there. We're going through the Ascari one final time here, trying to, you know, just survive towards the end of this Grand Prix. But unfortunately, well, we, 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 well, we're trying to do a little bit of drifting and, well, we, we, we completely drop it. Final lap of the Grand Prix. Fortunately for me, it doesn't make any difference there because uh, VRT Herschel was a lap down. So we do hold on to P10, score that one solidary point in the Grand Prix there. But P1R Brown supposedly wins the race. If he's done that, that has been three in a row for him. You know, it's been such an incredible turnaround for him. Fair play to him. Um, I think that he is the first driver as well to win three races this season, so three in a row is quite impressive. Coldhead in P2, I think he might be taking that to the stewards, but we still gained good points over Sam there, who came P5 behind LGS and x Rob Bobbitts. But just ahead of Franglish, Gorse Crab, Ellis, Midget, myself, and VRT Herschel, one lap down with the Toro Rossos of Die Hard and Icebergs, unfortunately retiring from the Grand Prix. But hopefully, you know, you guys have enjoyed this video. Do not forget to like, subscribe if you're new around here and you want to see more of my AOR Season 14 highlights. And hopefully, I will see you guys next week for the Singapore Grand Prix.